Yes, you're seeing this right. This is Battletech on the Sega CD. Confused? Well, stay tuned. Welcome back to another episode of Games You Never Played. I'm your host, Gaming J, and in this series, we hunt down the coolest and neatest unreleased alphas, incomplete betas, prototypes, other games that were just never released for some other weird reason. And today, we are checking out Battletech on the Sega CD. And no, I didn't mess up recording. This game has no audio, which kind of sucks. So uh, if you'll forgive me... Now we have some. It's not going to match up to the game, but use your imaginations here. Battletech on the Sega CD, and it looks gorgeous. Look at this. This is Battletech colon the Great Death Legion. Uh, this was an unreleased prototype shooter uh, that was actually intended for both the Sega CD and Sega Saturn, although pretty much nothing is known about the Sega Saturn edition, although people presume it's supposed to be similar to this one. Now, in Battletech lore, the Grey Death Legion was, of course, a legendary mercenary unit, getting their start by defending Trell One in uh, Lyran space, and uh, that they eventually grew to regimental size. They worked for both, uh, you know, House Steiner and uh, occasionally House Merrick, and they tended to fight uh, the Draconis Combine and also the Capellan Confederation, and they were one of the first units to score a victory against the clans at least Clan uh, Jade Falcon, if you know your Battletech lore. So if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm a huge Battletech fan. I love the Battletech franchise, and I am frankly devastated to play this game for you guys today because I'm playing it as part of my series of playing obscure and unreleased video games, and that means that this game never got released. We were cheated, guys! Look how awesome this intro is! We saw a jump ship jump into orbit, drop ships are coming down, we can only imagine what kind of awesome voiceovers there would have been. There's a planetary invasion going on. A lost invasion. It's like the lost tech equivalent of video games. In fact, that's what this whole series is. It's like playing lost tech video games. Um, again, if you know the Battletech franchise, the lost tech is the forgotten and lost Star League technology that people occasionally unearth and it is totally awesome and badass. So yeah, I, I don't want to skip this intro. We're watching the whole thing. Um, partially because this looks so cool. Oh man, look at that, it's so neat. Um, partially because this looks so cool, but partially because this is a very short game. So we're not gonna have tons and tons of gameplay here today. We'll see what we got. Um, as you guys will soon see, this is sort of a Mech Warrior style game. Oh my God, look at that Atlas. That looks so sick. That is awesome. If this game, by the way, had existed back in the day, I was always more of a Super Nintendo guy than a Sega Genesis guy, even though uh, I had both, but I got the Sega Genesis late in its lifespan, but I had the Super Nintendo right from the get-go. But if this game had existed, seeing a Draconis Combine Atlas prowl around the battlefield, and what is that, a Zeus, possibly? Uh, I think there's a stalker behind it. Wow, this is so cool. If I knew this existed, if this had existed back in the 90s, I 100% would have got a Sega CD. I would have asked for that puppy for Christmas. I would have told my parents it's the only thing they have to get me. They can cancel all the socks. All the socks and underwear. You guys don't have to buy me that. Don't feel obligated. Put all that sock and underwear money towards a fresh new Sega CD. And one game. This is the only game I would have asked for. This is so cool. Um... You know, we have done a lot of Battletech playthroughs. Oh my god, there's a Marauder in the background, too. Two of them! That is so cool. We have done a lot of Battletech playthroughs of classic Battletech games. We've played uh, all the DOS games, really. The Crescent Hawks, Inception, Revenge, Mech Warrior. You know, people have asked me, like, what am I going to do next in terms of Battletech games? Uh, because, you know, I've played all the DOS ones, so, like, where do you go from there? And I, my response to that is that there are a few other Battletech games that I have up my sleeve uh, that I might play, but I'm not super interested in playing anything too modern. I mean, I am a retro gamer at heart. I still, am, mentally, I'm still living in the era. Oh, that mech's getting wrecked. <laughs> awesome. I'm still living in the Bit Wars era, you know? I never got over the Bit Wars, so Sega versus Nintendo is like my mentality. But anything that's too new, it's like, it's fine. Uh, and I'm not like boycotting it but I'm really sort of pulled into these retro uh, mech games. So uh, yeah, there are some Battletech games that are coming around, uh, so stay tuned for that. 
But, uh, oh, look at that intro screen. That is so awesome. Yes, you did it, Sega. Why was this game not released? Why is this game not released? We get to explore the dropship here. Uh, but I'll fi just finish my thought. Yes, yeah, so there's there's other Battletech games that are incoming. But I, I have known about this game for a long time, and I was actually saving it for this game you, Games You Never Played series. Because this is such a short game that, again, you know, we might be able to squeeze 10 or 15 minutes of gameplay out of this, but then we're kind of going to be done. So it's not going to be a super long video here today. But anyway, enough of me yammering about. So in this game, uh, presumably in the finished version, you would get to go to all these different areas and do things. But for instance, if you go to, say, the mech bay right now, you're not really going to find all that much. So here's our awesome mech bay. I mean, the graphics look amazing, especially for the Sega CD. But you can't really do anything in here. So I think you're just supposed to exit. Um, let's check out these other areas first. We have operations. Ooh, the ship's library. This is pretty cool. The tally board, planetary information. Oh my God, can we actually read about these things? Different star types. That's pretty cool. How do I go back here? So can we select other ones? Like, d does this even matter? Like different kinds of stars, <laughs> different densities and stuff. I mean, I guess maybe this would have, you would have like planned like to take, I don't know, lighter mechs on planets with heavier gravity or something. I'm not quite sure what, what purpose this served in the game, but it is cool. There's like spinning planets and there's like planet statistics and stuff. So they were planning something there. We have, oh my God, look at all these battle mechs. Hold on. The Mad Cat. Oh man, look at that baby. Wow, rendered on the Sega CD. I almost feel like for history's sake, we have to check all of these, these mechs out. Look at that, the Valkyrie. That's pretty cool. Tonnage, 100 tons, wow. Uh, let's check out the Vindicator. This is a good solid medium mech. Wait, why Why is it a hundred tons? Wait, wait, am I mistaken? The Vindicator, that's not a hundred ton ton mech, right? The Zeus is definitely not a hundred tons. Like 85. Okay, yeah, everything is just listed as a hundred tons for some reason. Wow, they have a lot of mechs in the game, actually. Um, this is actually, like, pretty awesome. Uh, if you think about, like, the Battletech games that existed around this time, so... Um, the Super Nintendo had a Mech Warrior game. There are actually two. There's Mech Warrior 30, 3050, where you're running around a Mad Cat, and then there's like a first-person Mech Warrior game that's kind of similar to the Mech Warrior game we played on DOS, except it uses Mode 7 and all the enemy mechs are sprites. That Centurion's head looks weird. That does not look correct. Uh, yes, I am going through all the mechs. <laughs> so I hope you like Battletech today, guys, because this is just us checking this out. There is going to be some gameplay, I promise you, but this gives me time to talk about the game. Ooh, that's a good-looking dragon, actually. I love how all these mechs look they, like they've just been sitting in a space dock, and they've kind of, like, rusted away and stuff. Ooh, the dashi. Uh, I remember that from MechWarrior 2. Yeah, that is... I think that's, like, an 85-ton mech again. I don't know if that's a 100-tonner. Hunchback is, like, 50 tons, 45. It's definitely not 100. Uh, but it has an auto cannon on it. There's only three buttons in this game, by the way, uh, because it was played on a Sega Genesis controller. So there's uh, shoot lasers, shoot missiles, and shoot auto cannons. So notice that the uh, that the locust here has an auto cannon. That is weird, eh? So these are definitely not um, you know properly statted mechs. Like the Marauder here is supposed to have two PPCs, and it definitely does not. You know what, it is actually a little bit of a crime to make a Battletech game with no PPCs, so we're gonna dock a few points off of this game for that, but uh, yeah. This game also does not have heat implemented, so it's like, you're just gonna be able to fire all the weapons you want. I think there's like reload times, but that's about it. Uh, were there any more mechs, by the way? I'm just kind of curious. Um, oh my God, there were. Wow, they put a lot into this. Okay, hold on, we saw the Mercury. Wait, did we see? Yeah, we did see the Mercury. What about the Panther? Yeah, that, that one's supposed, definitely supposed to have a PPC for a hand. Look at that face. That's like a jack-o'-lantern face. Interesting. Shadowhawk was in the Mech Warrior game. But anyway, the Mech Warrior game that uh, was on the Super Nintendo used sprites. So sort of like Duke Nukem 3D. It definitely did not have these fully rendered 3D models. So this is amazing actually to see running on Sega CD hardware. Are you, I hope this is getting you guys amped to actually see the gameplay. I know I'm taking my sweet time, but I just want to see, like, what's in here. Oh, look, there's, like, the jump ship. Wow, like, 
Somebody needs to rip the assets out of this game and like, I don't know, remake it or something. Because this is crazy. General information. Okay. Oh, that's the jump ship. Oh, that's weird. The crew bios. <laughs> when I went to crew bios, I wasn't really paying attention, but it showed us a picture of our jump ship. So is that saying that the, <laughs> the jump ship is a person? The crew? Uh, we only have a complement of one, and it's a giant, uh, faster than light ship. That is our, uh, that's our crew. We call him Steve. We also have an air, one arrow fighter, apparently. Or just, that's just showing us what arrow fighters look like. All right, all right. Oh, wait, there's even more. Planetary information, we've already done that. Oh, wait, what? Okay, hold on. We've seen that, we've seen that, we've seen that. So that was under tactical maps. Interesting. Wait, what was under the ta- wait. Wait, the tally board just takes you here. Tactical maps takes you here. Am I missing something? Ship's library takes you here. Okay, so no matter where you go, you just go to the ship's library. Okay, so that- that screen's a bust. Anyway, that was kind of cool to see all that stuff. Let's check out the bridge, see what's going on up here. Oh my god, look at these graphics! This is so cool, it's like the bridge of the Enterprise. That ship is gonna hit us! Move! Oh my god! Are we docking with the jump ship? That's cool. Or we're just... Where are we? Are we in a jump ship? What's happening? We're just like watching ships go off to fight. Okay, we're just gonna sit here in our escape pod. We accidentally ejected ourselves into an escape pod. Oh no, now we're following the jump- the drop ships? I don't know what's happening here. Okay, this is just- I think this is just showing off another cutscene that exists in the game. Probably. <clears throat> so I would say that this game, like maybe you could count it as an alpha. Uh, it's officially listed as a prototype game. But I would say... In fact, maybe that's a better description. I don't know. What's the difference between a prototype and an alpha? We should figure that out early in our Games You Never Played series. So that we know this. I know a beta is like, it's getting ready for development. And then there's like, you know, a, an almost finished copy. Anyway, let's hop into the briefing because I know that's like one of the few other places we haven't been yet. And I know that there is something here. The Grey Death Legion. So while we're watching this last cutscene before we get to the game, I'll tell you a little more history about this game. So this game was produced by a company called Absolute Entertainment. And they also made a game, by the way, called Star Trek The Next Generation Advanced Holodeck Tutorial. What would that be? I don't know. I, I haven't looked up anything about this game. It runs on the Game Gear, apparently, but I'm still kind of tempted to actually go find it. And I might play that for you guys sometime. Uh, but Absolute... Oh, look, there's even mission briefings and stuff. This is, like, very cool. Love how our commanders just, like, saw, like you know... Sh <laughs> I can't even talk. Strutting away from the briefing. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. Let me finish the history, and then we'll go into the mech bay. I'm just teasing you guys today, aren't I? drawing it out so long uh so absolute experience financial problems in the mid 90s and so this game was basically put on hold but the mega cd version was discovered in the 2000s and it was actually released on a website called good deal games which is famous for s typically selling homebrew copies of games but they also sell uh sort of unreleased games that get rediscovered so this game was technically sold by a company in the 2000s but it was never finished or released by the company that actually made it anyway i think we have explored everything there is to explore the only thing left to do is to hop into mech combat oops i went to the mech bay hop in and actually start the game so without further ado let's go kill some dudes all right so here we are in uh in our environment here. I think that's an enemy. So I think I'm shooting auto cannons at him. I think this is missiles. And you can also shoot lasers. Oh yeah, look at this. I'm just lasering him down. Am I in a marauder? What am I in? No, I'm in like a shadowhawk. Oh look, he's running away. Okay, now how do we move? I think you hold start and you press forward. And then you can start like revving up your uh, actions. Oh, the game just crashed. <laughs> it's glitching out already. Oh, God. What is happening? Oh, I think I'm jumping. Okay, hold on. I'm going into reversing mode. Let's turn around and see this guy. So we've glitched out the game, and it's only been, like, like literally five minutes. Look how cool this looks, though. I know the graphics are, have all screwed up. So the weapons play a little differently. I'll tell you a little about this, actually. So the laser will shoot wherever you're aiming. The missiles 
which I'm shooting right now, and they just look like messed up splotches, they always shoot directly in front of you. So they will always sort of be firing out of your chest, and wherever the center of your torso is aimed, that's where they will fire. And then the autocannon will fire, it's sort of like ballistic arc shots, but it also fires where you're aiming. So it's actually kind of a cool idea. Like this is definitely not Battletech uh, correct. It is definitely not correct that this is how the weapons work in Battletech. But I would say it's kind of like an interesting way to take the, oh, we just destroyed him. Awesome. It is an interesting way to sort of take the Battletech uh, world and try to put it onto a three button controller. I like the fact that you can like aim your lasers just by moving your cursor around. And I like the fact that you know, the missiles work differently than the lasers. It like gives the missiles, the autocan, the lasers like different purposes. So it's like you can be aiming to the left, but you can also shoot missiles right in front of you. Um, I don't like the fact that the world's all glitched out. So let me see if I can reset this here. The game has a soft reset, which is you hold start and you press A, B and C at the same time and you'll reset. And I think, I think the way this game works is it puts you in a random mech every time or just puts us in the same mech. Okay, so let's see if we can ice this guy. Now that we understand combat, come here, you stinking marauder. Get out of here. Marauders are actually really cool mechs. They're one of my favorite mechs. I'm like firing missiles at them. I can fire auto cannons at him too. We could laser him down. I wanna like see him get destroyed before the uh, graphics get all funky. Okay, I'm just gonna like be pressing all three buttons at the same time. I'm like using the claw grip on the controller. Oh, we decimated him. That uh, is not Battletech appropriate. If a Shadowhawk actually did go and fight a Marauder, it'd be very hot, hard for the uh, Marauder to actually, or the Shadowhawk to actually win. Anyway, we're taking down this guy too now. We don't even really have to move in this demo. Boom. Is he dead yet? Boom. Okay, I want to see if I can use jump jets for you guys. I don't fully understand how they're gonna work. Oh my God, a stalker. Okay, perfect time to use jump jets. Uh, I'm holding charge. And I just jumped back in time. Whoa, what happened? Okay. <laughs> the controls for this are really wonky. When you go into jump mode, you hold B to charge the jumps, I think. And then you, no, I don't even know how to do this. The jumping is actually weird. It's hard to control yourself. What I thought was correct is not. Um, I don't know where that bad guy went, by the way. Oh, he's, there he is. Oh, you see him? He's way out there. Like, imagine, so it's like, okay, this is obviously like an early prototype. Like, it's very glitchy, you know, things just don't quite work right. Uh, but, I mean, like, as a, as a, as a proof of concept, this, imagine, imagine if they like had actually finished this and they could have put it some like a few urban environments where there's some like trees or, or buildings that you walk by. Um, you could have battles with like multiple enemy mechs and stuff. Like, I would say this is no worse than the mech warrior game that we played on DOS. Like if you took this combat engine, you fixed it up and refined it a bit. This is definitely more, even more advanced than the one that we uh, played on DOS to be totally honest. So it's like, yeah, there's there's some game here. The menus needed some work. The menus needed some work to finish them. Um, you, but it's like if you had added in like contract negotiations and like a few different planets, and that's just easy. That's the easy stuff that the Mech Warrior game on DOS did. If you added in that stuff, you really could have had something here. It also would have been cool if like the three different weapons varied from Mech to Mech. I think we got destroyed. I think we just died. We're in like the mech afterlife. We're fighting an atlas, so it makes sense that it would destroy us. Um, but it would have been cool if the the mechs had it cycled through the three different weapons. So maybe it's like the A weapon, the cannon right now for me, you can see it's this cannon, the top left area. Um, the cannon and the laser fire wherever I'm aiming. It would have been cool if it's like whatever weapons the mechs had on their hands were there. And then you could have one weapon on your torso. So every mech sort of had three weapons or three weapon types. So it's like the, you know, C button shoots everything that's on your right hand. A button shoots everything on your left hand. And then B shoots whatever's on your torso. Then you could have done some fancy stuff because you could have had like the Mad Cat here would have had LRMs on its torso. And then you could have had like a different mech like the Hunchback 
which would have had an auto cannon on its torso. And you could have had like different powers of auto cannons too. They don't all have to be the same, you know, like that actually, that's a, not a terrible mechanic for, oh my God, it's so glitchy. Not a terrible mechanic for a game like this. But okay, we gotta kill a mad cat. It's just too iconic to, uh, oh, I think I like ran past it. Hold on, I'm reversing. There's no uh, hit detection in this. You can just straight up walk through enemies. There he is. All right, we gotta kill a mad cat. It's like so iconic. Like nothing's more battle tech than a mad cat. Come here, mad cat. I wanna kill it with missiles. Well, even though they just look like glitched out squares right now. Oh my God, the missiles glitch this game badly. Oh man, I love like the fire effects when like you, you actually hit a mech with your laser, it like burns it. Um, I guess we do, like the laser does overheat and then it needs to cool down. So it's like there's some kind of like heat type mechanic, but they don't actually have a heat scale implemented. And heat is like one of Battletech's like uh, I most iconic uh, game mechanics. So to not have heat in a Battletech game, it's a little sacrilegious, but you know, we'll, we'll let them have it. So yeah, I don't know. I think this is an awesome looking prototype. And I guess we just continue to fight mechs forever. I actually do have the instructions that uh, came along with this. So let's take a quick look at those uh, while we are here today. Okay, Battletech Grey Death Legion Sega CD demo. This is an alpha demo build. Okay, so that answers our question. Is this an alpha or a prototype? Circa 93, 94, there's no sound. Um, the demo will launch the opening cinematic. If left unattended, the demo will cycle to a dropship mission and then back to the dropship. Um, the same three mechs will be in the mission. Press uh, B to select. Start launches the mission. Uh, yeah, so these things all bring up the ship library. We figured that out on our own. Uh, bridge runs cinematics. No, a different dropship landing video is here as well as death animations for your mechs. For these screens, it can be implied that the player was always to be in the Shadow Hawk for the entire game. That's actually somewhat disappointing. I mean, it, it kind of makes sense because, you know, in terms of designing an old game, it would make sense to limit uh, the player's choices so that you wouldn't have to design different cockpits and stuff. But that's a little bit of a downside, I think. It would be nice if they'd actually plan to put in different mechs that you could actually pilot. Uh, because let's be totally honest, it's a little unrealistic to think a Shadowhawk could even take on an Atlas or a Mad Cat. It would just be destroyed in uh, in real battle, like real life. But to hear the controls that I was using, steer the mech, shoot, auto cannon, tracks, uh, start selects to throttle, engage jump jets, select jump and hold B to charge. I tried that. Once jumping, select stop to land. Throttle setting worked better on my six bug controllers. And that's basically it. These are the only instructions that were ever published for the Grey Death Legion on Sega CD. So a very interesting and unique piece of lost tech gaming technology, a game that had so much potential that just looks like it would have been amazing. And even if it had limitations that you could only uh, pilot a, uh, you know, Shadowhawk or whatever, I mean, this game looks just so good for its era, so. Yeah, a little, little bit of a shame that this one never came out, but I mean, I guess that's the name of the game, right, guys? I mean, our series, the games you never played. We're going to be discovering lots of games, uh, some of which uh, rightfully <laughs> were never released. But honestly, like, I don't think there's actually going to be that many stinkers, you know? Like, I think every game that we're going to see in this series uh, is going to be games that, uh, you know, in some ways or another, it was a shame that they never actually came out. Oh my god, I just glitched. I glitched the game by changing my walking speed again. All right, well, suitable that we end this game in the glitch world. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, this this look, this complete look. I looked at absolutely everything that existed for this game of uh, Battletech the Grey Death Legion. I hope this satisfied your Battletech cravings and that you guys are Battletech fans just like me. I mean, there's a decent chance you might be because I think my Battletech videos draw on a lot of people. And uh, yeah, so I'm always looking for more Battletech to play, even if it's a game that was never fully finished. But yes, I hope you guys found this video interesting and entertaining. If you did, make sure to let me know in the comments, slap that like button so that I understand that you like this video and uh, all that good stuff. And uh, other than that, I will catch you guys in the next one. So until next time, my friends, remember, no guts, no galaxy. Alrighty guys, peace.
Yeah, you better run. You better run. Look at him. Dance, Commando! Look at him run. <laughs> the Commando runs like a dork. <laughs>